okay guys um let's do another G let me put up another geometry lesson um today we're gonna do i don't need this we are going to do a lesson what 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 color is it it's always red we're going to do sorry we're going to do a lesson called measuring segments measuring segments and so the first question that i want you to think about is if you see these two things you see the letters a b with um a dash over it and then you just see a b alone is there are these am i basically saying the same thing or how are these different? How are we supposed to read these different? So I want you to think about that. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay. Now, the first thing is how do, how do we measure? Oh, sorry. How do we measure lengths? And with 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 a ruler right a ruler that's how we measure we you know we get this ruler and what's the idea behind a ruler it's this long stick you know this this long stick and you know it starts at zero and then it's equally spaced you know one two three and then we hold it up against like some weird object you know now let's see this is four, five. And we say, oh, this object is five centimeters or five meters or five feet, whatever. So that's how we measure things using a ruler, right? And I have a tape measure. Here's my tape measure. Here's a tape measure. I have a bunch of rulers in the back corner. Easy, right? But then the next thing, what happens if like you broke your ruler? I want you to imagine like, I don't know, you, you broke your ruler. And so it looks kind of like this. Here's like, rah, 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 rah. and here's the ruler and here, uh, it cracked on the, it cracked on the other side also, right? And so you have a ruler that, that kind of starts here at like six, seven, eight, nine, ten like 11. And so I want to measure it. And so the question is, can I still use this broken ruler? Can I use this broken ruler to measure? Right? Because, you know, a little kid might be like, no, because you start at zero and you go up to the number. As advanced students, the question is, you know, the question is, can I use the broken ruler? And we know, yes. So let's say, here's the object. Let me change the color. Let me figure this out. Display, no. Try it again. Display, color. And let's make it blue. And the question is, this is the object. It's right here. This is the object. The question is, what is the length? And we know, we know, that because, because it begins at six and ends at 10, right? The distance, the distance is what? What's that symbol? It's the absolute value of 10 minus six, and therefore it's four, right? So it's four. So what are we going to say? What are we going to write? Let me change the color. Nope. The color, let's go back to black. So the length of AB, let's call this A and B. The length of AB, right, we would say AB 
equals six. So these two these two expressions showed up, and like I, it's different. Then first of all, this a b this is the act this is the actual thing. This is the act a this represents so a b with the line on top of it. This rep, represents the actual segments. This a b without a line over it, this represents. What did I write? The length or the difference? This is the length or the distance. So that's the difference. Once again, AB with a segment over it, this, is, this represents the actual thing. AB without a line over it, it represents a number, okay? And so we're getting really technical here. Some of you might be rolling your eyes like, Mr. Howell, this is ridiculous. No, 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 no. So we're getting very technical. Right, ready? If AB is equal to CD, then segment AB is congruent to segment CD. If the number equals the number, then the thing is congruent to the thing. Congruent is the geometry word for equal. But once again, let me say, let's say this again. If the number, the length is equal to the length, then the thing is congruent to the thing. So once again, this is equal. This is congruent. It's really technical and like, I'm not testing you on it, but I want, as advanced students, I want you to speak the language properly. That, so length AB is equal to length CD. Therefore, segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Okay, so let's, then, then we get some run over the mill questions. Oh, let me get my segment. Here is a segment and Let's just put these on. So let's say that let's say that a is negative eight. Let's say that point B is negative five. C is um, negative two. I'm going to say that D is zero and point E is point two. And I'd like you to, whoops. Um, I would like you to find the following lengths. A, I want you to find, oh, sorry. I would like you to find the length of AB, BC, CD, and DE. So I'll okay, pause the video, and then now let's come back and figure this out. So how are we going to find B? It, B it, well, it starts at A and ends at B. We know it's the absolute value of negative 5 minus negative 8, which is the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Now, obviously, visually, some of you are like, Mr. Adler, it's 3. I can see it. But... We want to know the formula. Well, obviously, there, it's gonna, not obviously, sorry. There's going to come a time when the numbers are going to get like really weird and you're not really sure. You know end minus beginning. BC, same idea. Negative 2 minus negative 5. Subtracting a negative is like adding a positive. We have absolute value 3. 3. CD, 0 minus negative 2 is the absolute value of 2. So the length is 2. And DE, same idea, 2 minus 0, absolute value of 2, it's 2. Uh, what statements can we make there for? So if AB is 3 and BC is 3, what two statements can we say? We can see that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. What else? And... Yes, segment CD is congruent to segment DE.
Cool. Okay, let's move on. Shall we move on? Here's our first postulate. Here's our next postulate. Oh, don't go. There we go. Here's our first postulate. Um, it is called the segment addition postulate. Segment addition postulate. I'm going to abbreviate. And it says if A, B, and C are collinear, right, and B is between A and C, then, ready, A, B plus B, C is equal to anyone, A, C. Once again, that's a, that's a postulate. It, it's just the way it is. Right? It seems weird, but here's A, here's B. Um, a, 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 yeah, let's see. A, B, C. That's, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. Right, a, 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 a whole is made of is the sum of its parts. So let's see that. So let's see that. Um, let's say that A B. Obviously, what happens in geometry classes is that we just get reduced to an algebra problem. Let's say that A B is um, A B is two um, x minus eight, and B C is equal to three x minus 12. Um, if I tell you that DT, uh, if I tell you that AC is equal to 60, um, I want you to find X and then AB and BC. So put it on pause and figure it out. Okay, what'd you got? Well, we know that AB plus BC equals the whole thing. So 2X minus 8, <coughs> sorry, plus 3X minus 12 equals 60. 5X minus 20 equals 60. F oh, stop, stop. 5X equals 80. <coughs> X equals 16. That's the first part. What's the length of AB? So AB is 32 minus it's 2 times 16 minus 8. 32 times 8 is 24. And BC, sorry, BC is equal to 3 times 16 minus 12. 48 minus 12 is 36. <coughs> sorry. Last topic for today, we want to talk about what's a midpoint? What is a midpoint? What is a midpoint? Anyone? Okay, it's a point. <coughs> I apologize. A point on a segment. that, what does it do? It divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, next thing, anything? Anything, I mean like a segment array, a line that passes through the midpoint is a bis it bisects 
the segment. Or we call it a bisector. Sorry, I'm trying not to cough. So once again, let's just do a diagram, right? We have a segment and we have a point on the segments and we call this <coughs> A, B, and C. And the claims if segment AB is congruent to segment BC, then B is a midpoint. What was the other condition? I, I need to make it clear that um, B is between A and C, right? Right, we need to make that clear because let me just do a quick diagram. Um, you know, here's A, here's C, and like here's B, right? Is B a midpoint? Well, A, you know, AB is congruent to BC. Notice those little slashes I wrote that represents congruent. But is, a, is B a midpoint of AC? No. So once again, B, so let's see. Um, and actually, that's part of a point on a segment. So we made that clear. So B must be a point on segment AC. Okay, I corrected myself. So if AB equals BC and it's a point on the segment, then B is the midpoint. Perfect. Keep your eye out for trick questions like this. And then let's say that, and so we, I'm sorry, I apologize. If it's a midpoint, we put those slashes through it like this. Those slashes represent congruent, are telling us that AB is congruent to BC. And then I can give you an algebra problem. Two, let, let, let's let um, AB be 2x plus 1. Let's let BC be 3x minus 4. And I would say, question, let B be a midpoint. You know, find, saw, find X. And then find the length, uh, find the length. Sorry, sorry. Find the length of AC. Pause, come back. 2x plus 1 equals 3x minus 4. I know that x equals 5. Therefore, AB, which I know equals BC, equals what? Uh, what's 2 times 5 minus 1 plus 1? 11. What's 15 minus 4? 11. Nice. Therefore, AC is 22. I went a little fast with the algebra. You can go fast. You're advanced math students. I'm fine with that. Um, do page, it's unit one, it's a, let's go to the book, I'm sorry. It is unit one three. The PDF is, um, blah, 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 blah. it's, uh, let's see, it's the PDF is page 63 and do one through 35 odd and then do the challenge problems. Yeah, so let's get back to this. So, I'm sorry, what was the PDF again? It was 65. So, sorry. So, the homework, it's uh, page 65 in the PDF. You're going to do 1 through 35 odd, and I want you to do the challenge problems. That's it. Good luck.